Hello and welcome to the session. In this session, first we will discuss implications. Here we shall discuss the implications of if then, only if and if and only if. If the statement is of the form if P then Q then this can be written in the following ways like P implies Q or P implies Q. This symbol is for implies. The next form in which if P then Q statement can be written is P is a sufficient condition for Q. Next is P only if Q then we have Q is a necessary condition for P. Then we have negation Q implies negation P. Consider the statement if X is a prime number then x is odd. This is of the form if p then q. So here the statement p is x is a prime number and the statement q is x is odd. So this statement can be written in five forms. According to the first form we have p implies q that is x is a prime number implies x is odd. Then for x to be odd, it is sufficient that x is a prime number. Then x is a prime number only if x is odd. Then for x to be a prime number, x is odd is a necessary condition. x is not odd implies that x is not a prime number. Next we discuss contrapositive of a statement. If a statement is of the form, if p then Q, then it's contrapositive is given by if negation Q, then negation P. Like consider this statement again. If X is a prime number, then X is odd. Here, this is the statement P. This is the statement Q. Now, the contrapositive of this statement is given by if negation Q, that is, if X is not odd, then negation P, that is, then X is not a prime number. This is a contrapositive of the given statement. Next, we have the converse of a statement. Again, if the statement is of the form if P, then Q, then its converse is given by if Q, then P. Consider the statement if X is a prime number, then X is odd. Converse of the statement is given by if Q, that is if X is odd, then P, that is then X is a prime number. This is the converse of the given statement. Next we shall discuss if and only if. This is represented by this symbol. It means the following equivalent forms for the given statements P and Q. Like the first one says P if and only if Q. The next is Q if and only if P. Next one is P is necessary and sufficient condition
for Q and vice versa. Then this can also be written as P if and only if Q. Consider the statement P given by if it rains then I stay at home and a statement Q given by if I stay at home then it rains then P if and only if Q is given by it rains if and only if I stay at home. Next we shall discuss validating statements. Here we shall discuss some techniques to find when a statement is valid. Like if the statement is of the form P and Q, then to show that P and Q is true, we will perform the following steps. According to the first step we have, we show that the statement P is true. And in the second step, we show that the statement Q is true. So if we show that both the statements P and Q are true, then the statement P and Q would be true. Next, if the statement is of the form P or Q, then to show that P or Q is true, we must consider the following, like the case 1, which says, that by assuming that P is false, we show that Q must be true. Then, by assuming Q is false, we show that P must be true. The next we have if the statement is of the form if P then Q then to prove this statement we need to show any one of the following cases. The first one says by assuming that P is true, we show that Q must be true. Or the second case that we can show is that by assuming Q is false, we show that P must be false. This first case is the direct method and the second case is the contrapositive method. Then if the statement is of the form P if and only if Q then to prove this statement we need to show if P is true then Q is true and if Q is true then P is true. The next we have method of contradiction. If 
we are given a statement P, then to check whether the statement P is true, what we do is we assume that P is not true. That is, we say that negation P is true. Then we arrive at some result which contradicts our assumption and thus we can conclude that P is true. Next method to check the validity of statement is using a counter example. By this method we can show that a statement is false this method involves giving example of a situation where the statement is not valid and such an example is called the counter example the name itself suggests that this is an example to counter the given statement let's consider a statement if x is an integer and x square is even then x is also even. This is of the form if p then q. Here the statement p is given by x is an integer and x square is even. Statement q is given by x is even. We will try to prove the given statement to be true using the contrapositive method in which we assume that Q is false. That is, we take that negation Q is true. That is, we say that X is odd. Then we need to show that negation Q implies negation P. This is what we need to show. We have assumed that negation Q is true. Now we will show that negation P is true. Since we have taken that X is odd, so we can write X as 2N plus 1 for some integer N. Then X squared would be equal to 2N plus 1, the whole square, which is equal to 4N squared plus 4n plus 1. Now, this number is odd due to the presence of this 1. So, we say that when x is odd, we get x square is also odd. Since we are getting that x square is odd, so we can say that negation p is true. Hence, we get that negation q implies negation p. Thus, the given statement is True. So this is how we check the validity of a statement using different methods. This completes the session. Hope you have understood the implications and validating statements.